everyone, my name is Shelby, otherwise known as Shelby Zill here on YouTube, and today I'm doing the answers to your questions, uh, a Q&A if you will, that I've taken questions from YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, and we're going to answer all of them right now. So I've been screenshotting them on my phone, of course, and I'm just going to read them off of here. Easiest way to do it, right? Let, let's start with the less serious questions, right? So the first question I'm going to answer is, Shelby, what's your favorite pizza? And what's your least favorite pizza? My favorite pizza is honestly probably just plain cheese pizza. Um, although I try to avoid it because I'm lactose intolerant and I try to eat as vegan as possible. You know, that sort of thing. There was when I lived in San Jose, California, there was a vegan pizza place there. And my favorite thing to get there was like the fake Canadian bacon um, on my pizza with black olives. And... My least favorite pizza would probably be anything with like those meatball things on them. Like my parents have always, this is this was funny. When I first became a vegetarian, I went home to my parents' house. I told them, and like my dad was like, "Let's order a pizza," and my mom goes, "We can't order a pizza. Shelby can't eat pizza. She's a vegetarian." Like they didn't even realize that you could get pizza that wasn't a meat lover's because that's the only pizza I ate growing up. So that's probably my least favorite pizza, like a meat lover's pizza. Next question is, do I have any advice on starting a channel? Your content is so real and informative. What editing do you use? Any advice on starting a channel? I, You guys, I think I just got really lucky and my channel grew pretty fast to where it is. We're at 40,000 subscribers right now, which blows my mind. I've only been posting consistently since August. Um, so that's insane. And I, the only advice I have, the only thing that I've done is be myself. I know, like, so many people say that, right? And, like, going into it, you feel like, oh, that's not going to be good enough. But people really appreciate realness in people. I think that's the whole appeal of YouTube in general is that you guys get to know the real me and see the real me. And, like, you know, kind of when you watch people on TV, if you will, you don't really get to see them. You don't get to have your input into their stuff. You know what I mean? I think people, as human beings, we just have a genuine interest in people's lives. And I think if you start making videos about things that you're passionate about, you'll find people who are passionate about the same thing and you will gain a following. That's just, that's just what has happened to me. So that's my best, my best advice I can give you. I did want to start a channel like years ago, like five years ago when I first started watching YouTube consistently, I wanted to start a channel and I didn't until recently and that is my regret. So other than that, I would tell you just start. Even if your first several videos are shitty quality and they're shitty videos, you're getting used to how to do it, you're learning about editing and stuff like that. Um, so that's definitely, don't wait. That's the, the best advice I can give you is just start. I mean, she wants to know what editing I use. I literally, I use iMovie. Um, I use the free software that came with my computer. I might upgrade to Final Cut Pro, but it's like $300 and the only difference really is is you can add more effects on the same screen. I'm like, is that really worth that kind of money? I don't know. It depends on how my channel does. You know, I want to spend most of the money that I make on this channel, put it back into the channel, which uh, upgrading my editing system would obviously be like one of the things I would do. So we'll see. But right now, yeah, all I use is iMovie. Oh, and someone else asked, what do I use to record? I use a Canon T3i to be thrown in a fit. You guys know he's always throwing a damn fit. Y'all see him? ridiculous. Uh, I use a Canon T3i. I just got this camera. Madison bought it for me for Christmas. Uh, I guess I didn't ever update you guys on that. I used to use a Canon... Was it a Canon? Uh, I don't know what it is. It's over there. I'm not going to go grab it, but it was just a point-and-shoot camera is what I made my first, like, few dozen videos on, um, and it's not the best quality, but if you film in daylight, most people... It looks pretty decent, you know what I mean? So, but right now, yeah, I'm using a Canon T3i. I bought it on Craigslist for 300 bucks. Someone else asked, do you have any tips for rebuilding your self-confidence after going through a t abusive relationship? Uh, what did I do to rebuild myself, honestly? Let's think about this. It Let me say, first of all, that it took a long time. For the longest time, I was down on myself, and I was depressed, and I was suffering a lot within myself, like not really sharing that with anyone, but really struggling with my self-worth and stuff like that. Um, I think the only way I got through it is I surrounded myself with positive people who made me happy, and um, also just I kept 
doing the things that I wanted to do. Like, after I broke up with, my, or after my boyfriend and I broke up, the one from my abusive relationships, if you guys haven't seen those story times, go check them out. The thing I did was I threw myself into something else. So as soon as we broke up, I joined the drill team and I joined student council. And soon after that, I became president of both. Um, I was very busy and very delved into that and also into fashion. I used to never wear the same outfit twice. You guys have probably heard me give this spiel before, but I just found other things that made me happy um, and that gave me confidence. I guess fashion was probably something I turned to that gave me a lot of confidence um, because I I was very good at it, I guess. However good you can be at something like that in high school. I, I Yeah, I won Best Dress in high school. Um, that was something that helped me rebuild my confidence. Other than that, I would say... Yeah, just surrounding yourself with people who love you and who appreciate you for you uh, can really help you understand that you are valuable to other people even though that other person who's a piece of shit didn't value you the way you deserved. All right, Marissa Rush. Sorry, I haven't been saying y'all's names. I'll, I'll try to start doing that now. Marissa Rush asked me what made me start YouTube. I guess the community aspect of YouTube is super cool. Um, sometimes I'm... I'm a very, l I'm a very introverted person. I was gonna say a loner, but yeah, I am a loner as well. I'm a very introverted person and I'm not good at connecting with people um, like on a quick basis. So like, if I'm ever single again, I'll probably be single forever because if I ever go to like a bar or an event where there are people and you're like expected to like go up to people and just like make friends and start talking, I'm not good at that. I hate small talk. And the difference in that is I can get on camera and say everything I need to say and then you guys can respond to it and it's so much easier easier for me uh, to communicate with people that way. I don't know. Um, I Yeah, I really like the community aspect of it. And I think that I have, as weird as it, it sounds to say this, um, I think I have learned a lot of stuff in my life. And I have some life experiences that I wanted to share with the world that I felt like could help someone. And I am so lucky that I have you guys who have come to me and I have given advice and I've helped through so many things. I think that's so cool. And like that was just what I always wanted was to help people who have been going through things, whether it be, you know, the abusive relationship stuff or the coming out story that I did or, you know, those sort of things. I think I can help a lot of people. So that's was, I guess, my main, uh, what do you want to call it? Motivation to start my YouTube. She also asks, uh, what's my full-time job? And my full-time job is, I don't want to share exactly what it is, but my full-time job is in the environmental field. I basically hold um, big corporations accountable for when they break regulations or break their permits and stuff like that. I deal with those sort of things. So yeah, that's what I do. Carrie asked me a question from Madison. Um, and a couple of you guys asked me something like this, like if I've met Madison's parents um, and stuff like that. But Carrie asked me, I'd love to hear about Madison and her upbringing, maybe a brief coming out story. Uh, when she's ready, of course, also, does she? what does she do for a job? I know you guys met in college, and I'm just curious about what her major was, considering you guys have a lot of the same interests. And how is your relationship with her slash parents slash family? <laughs> yeah, I asked Madison if she would be okay with me talking about this. She said that she will come on my channel sometimes, you guys, but uh, she's not going to be, like, super involved, and mostly that's because I've put all the work into this channel, and she doesn't want to, you know, take that away from me and and like she would just be here and not really helping me do all the editing and all the behind the scenes stuff that I have to do and also because she works a lot more than me I have a very structured schedule and hers is not so much that way um, but I asked her if I could talk about this and she told me yes so Madison's brief coming out story is that uh, growing up her mom was very very religious and when her sister <laughs> actually most of her siblings are gay only one of them is not <laughs> Um, when another her first sibling came out as gay, her mom basically said, you know, I don't want anything to do with you. And so Madison uh, knew she was gay for a while before she came out, but it was kind of pointless for her to come out to her mom without having a partner. So once we started dating and we got serious, she knew that she had to talk to her mom about it. Her dad really isn't in her, in the, wasn't in the picture at this time. We kind of talked to him now. Um, yeah, so she didn't come out to her mom until we started dating and got serious. She went home by herself to tell her mom, and um, her mom was not as um, reluctant to hear it as she was with Madison's first sibling that came out. Uh, her mom just basically told her, you know, you'll have to answer to God for this, which um, 
yeah, that's something else I could talk about on my channel soon, I guess. Um, but yeah, her mom just basically told her, you know, you'll have to answer to God for this and whatever. Um, and she basically was fine with it uh, for a while. We have had some things happen between then and now that has changed the dynamic of the relationship between um, us and her family. But uh, as far as the coming out part, that was fine. As far as having met her parents, yes, I have met her mom and her dad. Like I said, there is some stuff going on between us and them right now. But as far as I know, her mom um, doesn't have an issue with me. I know her dad likes me. Um, and they kind of just accepted us as us. Like, it was never really a huge issue. Another part of our relationship, not only because we're lesbians, but because we are obviously an interracial couple, there have been struggles on both sides of the family, on my side of the family and on hers. But overall, we can get together as family and uh, have Christmas or Thanksgiving or birthday parties and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's that's basically that. Oh, and what does she do for a job? Madison, yes, we have the same major in college. We were both environmental science majors. Madison um, does a different kind of sector of environmental stuff. So if you, that's what I was trying to tell some people who have reached out to me saying they want to major in environmental science. It's very important to understand what realm of environmental science you want to go into because there is public and private sectors. There is doing more compliance monitoring and there is doing field work and there is doing, you know, research and all that kind of stuff. Like there's a ton of stuff that is involved in the environmental realm and it's very important to know that before you go in. I wish I had known that before I went in. Um, but yeah, Madison does um, like private sector work. She does um, consulting and she does environmental impact assessments um, for NEPA One documents. And yeah. <laughs> what is your sexuality and how did you come out? Um, I think I have a coming out story. I'll link it on whichever side. I don't know, never know when I'm like looking at the camera which side these things pop up on. But I have a coming out story. You can go watch that. That's how I came out. Um, as far as my sexuality is concerned, I mm, there's this thing in the LGBT community where if you've only ever had sex with you know the one sex that you are uh, now I attracted to, you're called a gold star. That's not me. I've had two serious boyfriends in my life, both for about five years each, and that is still a question that I'm not sure how to answer what my sexuality is because ugh, I was so young and um, neither one of the relationships were very healthy I guess if you would say and I never I feel like the first one I was too young to know what being attracted to someone was I just think I thought that that was what you're supposed to do and it was normal and then my second one was definitely like I was not fully attracted to him um, and I've I'm actually very it's very weird. I've never really been attracted to anyone ever, like, seen someone and be like, oh, I want that. Oh, I think she's so hot. Oh, I think he's so sad. Like, I don't have that reaction really ever. Uh, the only time I've ever thought that is about Madison, and that's not to sound fucking cheesy. I'm just trying to be honest with you guys. I don't have those feelings towards people, and I'm also not super aware of all of the different labels there are now in the LGBT community. It's frustrating that I, I'm part of a community and I don't even know all of the labels because there are so many now to identify as um, and, and that's something I don't really like. I don't really like labels, not to be like super hippie or whatever, but like it's, I feel like it's separating us even more and that's just not personally what I like. So uh, I guess if I had to put a label on it, it would be bisexual only because I don't know if Madison and I weren't together who I would be attracted to. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Next question is, what is our best memory together? Um, I asked Madison about this one and she said that probably when we kissed on the Great Wall of China. Um, I'll put the picture right here. Oh, he's so cute! So cute! Okay, yeah, that's probably our best memory together. Uh, someone asked, how do I get my makeup to look not cakey or oily? Um, I use good foundation and I use a beauty blender. <laughs> No, I'm definitely not a makeup artist whatsoever, you guys. You need to know that at all. I do my own makeup, and that's about it. Um, I use uh, foundations that are oil-free and are more mattifying because I have more oily skin. And to make sure that doesn't look um, cakey, I use a beauty blender. I got one for Christmas, and it has been the best thing uh, ever for my makeup application, which, whatever, take it for what you will, but I love that thing. I'm, <laughs> I love this person's username. I always see them on Instagram. It's I'm a lonely potato. They ask me what is the place you want to visit and why. Um, 
my number one place on my list to visit is New Zealand and literally if you just Google the words New Zealand and you look at Google images you will understand why that is the number one place I want to visit. It is absolutely beautiful. The green mixed with the blue and the waters and the glaciers and I ugh. I die. I want to go to New Zealand so badly and another one is the Czech Republic because that's where my grandpa is from and I would love to, um, the whole like boho feel of the Czech Republic is uh, very attractive to me or at least Prague. Um, yeah. Have you ever met a fan while dumpster diving? I have! Um, shout out to Christina and Chelsea. Uh, I met them I guess like a week or two ago. I was dumpster diving and I saw, we had already checked Bath and Body Works and we drove past it again because I guess coming back around and someone was over there getting in stuff and I was like, oh that's so cool. So we moved on to GameStop and then that same car that was at Bath and Body Works came driving over and I stepped out of the dumpster to like say hi to whoever it was like because I knew they were a fellow diver, right? So I walked out there and I was like, hey, she was like, it's so nice to see another dumpster diver out here. And I was like, yeah, hey, I saw you guys over at Bath and Body Works and like before I could finish my sentence, she goes, you're Shelby! And I was like, what? So, so weird, um, but so cool. I was, it was the most surreal moment, uh, and she told me that I inspired her to start dumpster diving, and I was, uh, uh, I had a headache that day, so I don't know if I, if I seemed the most excited about it. I had the worst headache, but I was so pumped, and a shout out to you guys again. Um, if you go to my Twitter, you'll see they took a picture of me and Madison and them, and I retweeted it. Yeah, that was the coolest, most surreal moment of my life. I, it was awesome. Um, a lot of you guys asked me how me and Madison met. Um, I think that you're going to want her to be around when I tell that story. So I'm going to save that for another video. But short version is we met in college. Brian asked me what is one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, I well, Let's see. My three. Let's do my top three right now. Top three is this one girl who literally, like, I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel, right? I've always been attracted to that idea. But this one YouTuber named Sarah Nurse, 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 Sarah Nurse. I'll link their channels below these three people. Sarah Nurse, she has a channel that talks a lot about minimalism, and she basically saved up money for years so that they could quit their jobs and travel. Um, and move and you know not be tied down financially and not on a, a structured schedule and that is literally my life goal um i can talk a lot about that but that's really something i'm working towards right now um and seeing her do it just made me like get on camera like the first video i saw of hers i was like okay i have to do this so sarah nurse um and then another one is kendall ray i really want to run my channel similar to the way she runs hers but it's, um, I've had some struggles with that recently, so there's that. My third favorite YouTuber is probably, um, it's, I don't know if you technically call them YouTubers, but the Young Turks, a new station here on YouTube, and they are absolutely my favorite, um, news place for news ever. Uh, Kaylee Bannon, Banyan, asks, do you always eat vegan? How long have you been, um, what are your, <laughs> she asked me a bunch of questions. Okay, so first of all, do I always eat vegan? No, I don't. Um, sometimes when we're out eating, specifically with things like curry, sometimes there's cream in it, and I don't make a fuss about that. It's, it's that type of thing. I don't, I don't, and like sometimes if I go get a veggie burger, a place won't have vegan cheese, and I'll get regular cheese. Like, it's like that. I am lactose intolerant, so I definitely limit my dairy. And I don't eat eggs and I don't eat any meats. But, yeah, that's kind of what I mean when I tell you guys I eat vegan at home but not when I go out. So, yeah, I have. And then she says, how long have I been? Um, my progression to the current diet that I have uh, has been a long time coming. I stopped eating red meat my sophomore year in high school, um, which was probably like, holy fucking shit, uh, like six or seven years ago now. So I, I don't eat red meat ever. Uh, and then I stayed that way until the documentary Cowspiracy came out. If you guys haven't seen that, you need to see that. I'll link it down below. Um, yeah, when Cowspiracy came out, I gave up poultry and fish. Or no, no, when Cowspiracy came out, I gave up chicken, or I gave up poultry. And then I continued eating fish for about a year. Uh, that Cowspiracy came out in like my junior year in college. Um, and then, yeah, so I stopped eating poultry then, and then, um, about a year later, I gave up fish, and then, um, about, I guess I would say for about a year, uh, I haven't been buying any sort of animal products for my house, like milk, well, I never bought milk, but, like, cheeses, um, I stopped buying those for my house, so...
And then, um, what are your favorite animals? My favorite animal, two favorite animals, well, <laughs> my two favorite animals are uh, red panda and penguins. I love those. What pets did I have growing up? We had everything growing up. I had cows, horses, potbelly pigs, chickens, fish, dogs, cats, everything, everything. I've had it all. <laughs> not, not everything, but yeah. And then by the time I was like, you know, in high school kind of age, we only had cats and dogs and my... Uh, we had four Alaskan Malamutes, if you don't know what they are, they're very similar to Huskies, and cats, lots of outside cats. Okay, and then another question that I got a lot is uh, if Madison and I plan to get married and if we plan to have kids. So, um, yes, we plan to get married for sure, no doubt. The thing is, uh, I, I've mentioned it before on this channel, uh, we have student loans and we are trying to pay them off as quick as we can because we really want to live a life that is not um, beholden to other people. I don't know how else to say it. We, we have this dream of paying off our student loans within the year and buying a camper van and taking it across the country uh, and seeing all 50 states. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, my point in that is uh, Madison does not want to get engaged. She doesn't want to buy my ring until we are, um, you know, pretty close to paying off our loans, being done with that. Uh, we don't have that much compared to other people, but um, yeah, she wants to do that. And I know you can get engaged and like married without a ring, but that's just how we're doing it. That's how we're choosing to do it. I'm not buying a diamond ring for, you know, social justice purposes. If you guys know, don't know how diamonds are mined, Google it and you'll understand. So yeah, it, it's not an expensive ring. It's just, you know, we have priorities that we're trying to work towards. Um, we're trying to be very financially responsible and, you know, do things the way that would work best for us um, and as far as do we plan on adopting kids or having kids we go back and forth back and forth all the time which I think is fine because I am going to be 24 in a couple days Madison is 22 so we're still really young and honestly um, when we talk about kids we go back and forth back and forth with we'll have one like have um, a sperm donor for one and probably I would carry it um, and whatever sex that child comes out as we would adopt the opposite sex. Um, if we do have kids that's what we want to do but we still go back and forth a lot with by the time we're ready to have kids we feel like I she'll probably be like 28 and I'll probably be like 30 um, and that's always been like a huge fear of mine is having kids too late and getting too old too soon. So yeah that's the answer to your question. Um, we talk about it all the time, and, and the truth is we won't have kids for at least, at least five years. So we have plenty of time to, like, grow into that idea and talk about it and mature into whatever we decide to do. But, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. Someone asked me if I could only have one meal for the rest of my life, what would it be? My favorite food is pizza, which really sucks because lactose intolerant and, I, and you shouldn't eat cheese. It's not good for you. But, yeah, pizza is my favorite food, but I could not eat it for the rest of my life because I would be in terrible stomach pains forever. Um, if I had to pick something that was not so bad for me, I would pick these these tofu and Brussels rice bowls I make. I do like a stir fry tofu and Brussels sprouts and then I put it on rice and then I put lettuce in there and sriracha and I could eat that forever. Like it's so good, but it tastes really good too. So yeah, probably that. Question that I keep getting a lot is what times and days are best to go dumpster diving? Guys, I've said this in the video before, but whatever, I'm gonna say it here one more time and I'm gonna put it in the title of this video so that people can hopefully look at my channel and find it. Best time to go dumpster diving is going to be different for every Ulta location, every store, every Bed Bath & Beyond, every Bath & Body Works, every Old Navy, every TJ Maxx, they're all going to be different. There's no such thing as the best time to go. I would say for me, I say you should go at night so that you're less likely to get caught, um, not because it's illegal, but just because it's awkward and also because store uh, employees and managers can get really mad that you're in there and then they'll start destroying stuff more. So I go at night. There are no best times or days. It's going to be different for every location. I check three Ulta locations on the regular. One of them throws out their stuff every week and one of them only throws out stuff once a month. It's going to be different for every store. You've got to check your store and get to know their schedule. Uh, and that's all I can say about that. And last but not least, Kristen asks, uh, she always has the best, the best comments, I swear. She says, it's a breezy Saturday afternoon, perfect temperatures, and all the time in the world. How do you two choose to spend it? Our 
biggest hobby other than dumpster diving is hiking and we live in a place where there's not a ton of it um, but there's some so anytime we have time and the weather is good like like you described definitely we go hiking or we go to um, like a stream we like we have a, a double nest eno hammock that we like to go find new places to just hang it and chill uh, maybe a picnic and stuff like that what do I do with him Okay guys, so I guess that's it for all of your questions today. If you have any other ones, you can leave them below. I want to start doing Q&As more often because you guys have so many questions all the time and I would love to answer them for you. I don't want you to feel like we don't have a relationship because trust me, I see all of you guys. I see all of your comments and I appreciate you so much. So if you ever want to do another Q&A, definitely make sure you go and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, and Snapchat, I have a Snapchat, but it's not part of these little bubbles, but like I have one. Okay, go follow me there. It's the same username. It'll be a lot easier for me to get questions from there next time so that I don't have to like announce it in the end of a video or like I did this time. But yeah, go follow me there. There's a lot of cool stuff that I post. I think it's cool. Anyway, um, I guess that's it for today, you guys. And until next time, remember, create the peace.